What the hell is this? What in the actual hell is this content? I just don't know. I'm just sitting here like, am I, why am I surprised? But like, they, they continuously surprise me. How am I surprised when something awful happens in the game? I don't know. I don't get why. And by the way, the one positive thing, the one positive thing is that 2K screwed over the all money spent players today as well. And this just shows like this is not a, oh, a higher decision. This is a direct gameplay decision when they just don't have a clue. Apologies. Quite sick. But it just shows the gameplay developers have not got a scooby-doo about this game. They have not got a clue about this game. Who would have ever guessed that them completely stepping away, no longer interacting with people that play this game a lot, interacting with guys that just played a damn TT offline game mode is their only thing. Doing everything they can to dodge people that actually know what they're talking about in this game. And sure, whatever about us complaining about the predatory nature of this game, they don't even know how to make a good card anymore. Adam Morrison no longer has the tray fade. <laughs> they literally, Adam Morrison no longer has the tray fade. There are going to be any of the old Adam Morrison users, the guys that use this card and were really successful. Because there's going to be, there was a lot of people that were uh, really successful with this Adam Morrison. The main reason they were successful with him was the tray fade. And like the Kobe fade's not good. I have Kobe. I've used Kobe. The tray fade is whether you think the tray fade is the best thing in the game or not, is indifferent. It's better than the Kobe fade. It's definitely, definitely better than the Kobe fade. So we've got that. We've got Chet Holmgren, who they gave. I don't know what they've done today. They've given a bunch of people the Pro Three leader. The Pro Three leader is the worst leader in the game. If you try to fade on the Pro 3 going right, you end up like four feet back from where you threw it from, shooting a limitless fade and you can't hit it. The basic fade on this was better. And I'm happy, by the way. I'm not going for these opals. I'm not going for these opals, so I don't really care. And the most, the funniest one was Brandon Miller. And if they, they might go and change it now, which is hilarious, but it doesn't matter. If you can retro, they can retroactively change it. It doesn't change the fact they haven't a clue what they're doing as far as making cards usable in this game. And that's what they're meant, that's what they're supposed to be doing with these opals. Everyone being like, oh, but like, it needs to be realistic. They're changing them from what they had default into worse SIGs. They're changing them to worse SIGs. Like, it's mad. He's went from the Ben McElmore leaner, which is one of the best leaners in the game, to the Pro 3, the worst leaner in the game. Give me basic over Pro 3 a hundred times out of a hundred. They give him the worst leaner in the game. And then let's look at these cards right here. So these cards total, they're going to be um, 205,000 VC. If 2K were smart, they would have done what they did back in the day. And by back in the day, I mean prior to Season 5, where they had like a 58% sale. Like there was a 58% sale in Season... Um, in season four on almost all the packs. So you would get like a 58% sale on a lock-in, which basically would have meant that, um, you see these cards right here to lock-in, they would have been 99,000 VC. And you could have got, you could pay 99,000 VC to get these five, three of which being bombs. And then you could have gotten an Opal. And I think people would have done that. But now it's gonna be 200K VC. It's gonna be 200K. Um, and like becomes one of the worst value things like this might have been something where somebody just said ah oh, you know what i'll just go and i'll go and open it up i don't really or i'll go and take the risk i'll go and spend a little bit of money i don't really like these cards but like ah uh, you know what? i'll spend a little bit of money here and maybe i'll get a good opal or i don't really like the pink diamonds so Maybe I'll spend like $20 and get a, get myself a Galaxy Opal card. When that price is likely going to be raised to 50, it's going to be awful. At the same time though, like they might change it. 
they might change all of this. They might go and make it a $20 set because that's all this is worth. These are scrubs. These are bums. And if I'm 2K, especially because there's like a 95% chance we see as a selling point for season six, all cards back in the player market, which is ridiculous because every card's in the player market prior to season five. It's not a new thing bringing back what you just ruined. Fixing what you ruined isn't a new thing. And especially with Lonzo Ball being better than some of these Opals and being 75k um, VC, 100k VC. You want to put that in? You know what? I might buy it. I might go and buy it if you made this. Re if you made this what's in? If you put them out a price that I believe is worth it, I go and buy it. Like I don't have this like moral stand against 2k not making money. If there's content that I like, I'll support content I like. I don't get that whole don't give 2k money in any way. But I, what I do agree with is. If there's content you don't like, or if there's something 2K are doing that you don't like, to not give them money. Because if you give money to something you don't like, you're encouraging more of it. For example, like if I started opening packs, um, I'd be encouraging more of it. Or if with how expensive this is, I'd be encouraging more of it if I was putting in money. But um, like even look at these cards. Kirk Heinrich's pretty good. Joakim Noah, like 2K changed his release. So you see this card, right? If you look at the other Joe Kim Noah. So let's look at Joe Kim Noah right here. And I want to see what his release was last year. Because I I'm pretty sure he had a pretty decent release last year too. So last year, his release was the fault small Robert Covington. And on this one, for some reason, it was Christian Wood, Scotty Pippen. But that was just wild times. The fault small Robert Covington was Joe Kim Noah's release last year. Joe Kim Noah's release this year default small robert covington now he's got al horford default big like that's a worse release the reason why the default big upper and you might have said and even if you're saying like oh but like the default small robert covington doesn't look anything like joe keem noah's jump shot because noah had the most messed up jump shot ever but it's like so much for pro play and this huge thing when you you guys Fixing Joakim Noah's jump shot to give him the proper jump shot is an upper where he releases it from here. He brings the ball across his head and releases the ball from like here. Here. And not the chest pass. It doesn't, it doesn't look anything like Joakim Noah's jump shot. It looks absolutely nothing like it. The, do you want to know what the difference is? Neither of these look like Noah's jump shot. This is a pretty decent release, the one on the right. This is unusable. And you're never going to guess which one of these has the stats to hit a jump shot. Of course, the one with the unusable release that we're expected to pay legal tender for right now. And then what's even more insulting is you gave us Jaime Haquez Jr. for 84k. You literally gave us... Like, he's 6'7", George Niang. Like, a 6'7", 6'9", wingspan, non-dribbling, not, like, not the best shooter in the world with no defense. I know he's got all the defensive matches, but these stats are garbage. Like, it's literally, you gave us Jaime Hackways Jr. You gave us from the freaking 3rd of December or something. What was he, what day was he at? The 5th of December. You gave us a freaking updated Jaime Hackways Jr. That's all you did. That's all you did. You gave us Jaime Hackways Jr. with a few, with a little bit of better jump shot. Same on defense. And a few extra badges. As we gave it. We have to pay 84k. Lads. If you guys want to get an Opal, you have to pay 84k. With no even there's not even gonna be a discount anymore. There's not we know there's not even gonna be a discount anymore on these guys. Because two games just start with the discounts. Like if these again had a 58% discount and you got George Niang, who you didn't use, but let's just say it was 100 k VC, you got LaFrance, they decided to change Noah's jump shot back. Because if they change the leaners on these, on this scrub, on his awful leaner and his awful leaner, if they change the leaners, they, um, surely they change his jump shot back to something that's at least usable. Like, it doesn't have to look like Joakim Noah's release because they took out the chest pass upper from the game so much for pro play. Like, um, they took out the chest pass upper. They took out the upper that looked like Joakim Noah's. So there's no way of making a jump shot that looks like Noah's. So at least give him something usable. Um, and then... Like, at least if that gets changed, you're looking at 100k for him, LaFrance, Kirk Heinrich. You're like, okay, cool. $20, three really nice players for my team. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy out and I'll get an Opal. But 
right now we're going to be paying fifty dollars and then there's a chance you get broken leaner brandon miller um yeah there's a chance to get him um but yeah it is ridiculous it's just awful man it is awful like this is the look this is not as bad as the set two weeks ago not as bad this set at least has two as kirk heinrich who's decent and lafrance who's very good um this set is more comparable to iconic where he was very good and he was decent whereas now you've got one very good player and one decent player it's not as bad as this one where they all sucked nothing even close to last week where they were all pretty good what a terrible set lads what a terrible set